Thanks very much, and thanks for the invitation to speak here. I'm going to talk about a project that, um, in some respects, we've been working on in my group for a long time, and, um, and really, in some respects, only for um, the past few years. So we call this safe learning in robotics. We're trying to merge um, some techniques um, from control theory with some techniques from machine learning um, and, and bring them together in a, in a neat way. Uh, Kenne and uh, Jaime are here. Uh, today, and uh, this is also joint work with Mo and Jeremy. Okay, so the backwards reachable set. So this is the, we've, we've built a, a tool or a number of toolboxes for computing these reachable sets, the set of states for which you can have a, basically a, a certificate, a proof that if the system is in that set, then you can guarantee some sort of behavior. In this case, this set is, the, um, is sort of stylized, but we have some kind of region that in this case you don't want the state to get into. And, um, and so what we're computing is the set of states which for all possible control, for all possible effort that you could put into the system, there's some disturbance or the dynamics of the system could push you into that region. And so if you can compute that, and you can characterize it, then you can use it for control. You can keep the system outside of that region, and then you have a certificate that the system will stay out of that unsafe region, G of zero, for at most T time units, for however long you've computed that, that reachable set. And so we've, we've developed a number of uh, toolboxes, and one in particular. And then we've applied them in a number of different cases. So these reachable sets um, can look really simple or they can look quite complicated. You can apply them to nonlinear systems, to hybrid systems. Um, so here's a case um, which was done by Gabe Hoffman um, a long time ago now where the sets are actually quite simple. These are four quad rotors that were flying around, and those, those sets are collision sets. These are acceleration-constrained vehicles, and around each quad rotor is the unsafe set with respect to each of the other aircraft. And in this case, you have a proof that if an aircraft stays outside of the set corresponding to all the other vehicles, then you have a certificate of safety. Um, these sets have finite length because these quad rotors can hover, so they can basically stop. And, um, and here it was kind of, you know, a fun experiment. The students were controlling the vehicles, trying to get the vehicles to collide, and when the vehicles came on the boundary of the set, the automated control law would take over and guide the aircraft away from each other. The sets can also look quite complicated. So this is um, a sequencing problem of um, flying UAVs on collision-free trajectories. And there's priorities set. So the first vehicle has a priority, the first vehicle to be scheduled. And that, his trajectory provides a, a time-varying constraint for the next vehicle. And those provide time-varying constraints to the next vehicle. And so you can get quite funny, by the time you get to vehicle four, you can get quite funny-shaped reachable sets which represent the set of states from which you can reach your original trajectory while avoiding conflict with obstacles and anyone that's become before you in the hierarchy. You can also use this for hybrid systems. So systems where you have many different modes of behavior coupled with continuous dynamics. And, um, and this work was done a while ago by H, who's also here. Um, and so you can think about, for example, trajectories which you want to reach a, a given desired state, avoiding the trajectories of other vehicles, but also taking into account what you know or don't know about the environment. So you can use reachable sets to represent visibility regions as well. And then the coupling and intersection of these sets can be used to develop control policies which have certificates. Again, you're certified to reach your goal and maintain a collision-free trajectory as long as you stay inside the desired sets. Okay, so all of this works well if you have a good model of the system, and often we don't, especially in systems where the control authority is shared between a human operator and the automation, and we'd like to couple these. So you'd like some sort of model of how the human is in interacting with the system. So we'd like to use reachable sets for safety, still have that same um, safety certificate, but then we'd like to collect data online and use that data to, up, um, to update models of the system, to update the control law so that you can use that for higher performance. And, and so that's what we started exploring. Can we use machine learning 
inside the reachable set in a way that as long as we're not violating safety constraints, we can take advantage of these great high performance data driven schemes. And so we've done this in, in a couple of different contexts. And so here's one example. Our quad rotor is, um, is now just uh, flying, uh, or we want it to fly a trajectory, which is basically step functions in altitude. Um, and the reachable set is basically you don't want the quad rotor to crash into the ground. So we've got a reachable set, but we're also um, telling the quad rotor at the beginning the wrong thing. We've set all the controller gains to zero, so it, it doesn't really know anything about it, how, how to control itself. And so naturally when you, when you do that, so it's operating inside the reachable set, you set the controller gains to zero, the first thing it's going to do is go down and it would crash into the ground, but it hits the boundary of the reachable set and then that control law computed from the reachable set keeps it safe. And then it just kind of bounces around at the bottom of the set for a little while. Each time it, it bounces, so it's always sort of coming off the set, hitting the set again, it's, it's bouncing up and down. So it's learning as it goes along a little bit about its dynamic behavior. What makes it go up? It knows it wants to track a trajectory, but it doesn't really know how to do that. And that's what it's learning. And so we, it, it sort of, we can view this as experimenting. So the data-driven approach is providing a kind of experimentation, but it's a kind of safe experimentation that you can apply online. And if you keep doing this, after about a minute, it starts to, it starts to track the trajectory pretty well. We've also used this now to um, think about how not only to update the model inside the reachable set, but once you learn more about the disturbances, you can actually update the reachable set itself while still maintaining guarantees of safety. And so what we've done here is to apply machine learning to update the model of the system and update the disturbance model locally. So we can see, and I won't play out this, uh, this movie because it takes a little bit of time, but as the vehicles, um, in this case, approach the boundaries of their reachable set and they're learning more and more about the behavior, you can see these boundaries locally growing. And so you develop a new reachable set which maintains the safety guarantees. Okay, so, so the work that we've been doing um, in this um, series of projects, we call it reachability inspired control. So the safe control law is directly computed from the reachable set computation. And then we've been incorporating machine learning techniques in various different ways to improve the performance. Um, in terms of some applications, we've been doing a lot of experiments on our robots, but we're working on two projects, two new, newer projects with NASA, um, a forced landing system. So a lot of these projects are um, focused on now the, the new directions of incorporating these small UAVs into the national airspace system. And the forced landing system is gonna be a, a, a required system on board the UAVs that if something goes wrong, they have to land in a, a way that makes some guarantees about safety. And, and can they do that and how do they do that? So that's one thing that we've been using this reachable set for. Um, the second is actually doing traffic management. So how do you do the kind of collision avoid or collision free traffic management that's now done by air traffic control, but hopefully do it in a somewhat automated way or at least share the automation between controllers and um, or share the authority between controllers and automation. Um, we've also been working with um, ground vehicles. So we work with Scania. To, um, to think about these techniques in platooning their very large transport trucks across Europe. And then we've been applying these techniques also to a new project on the Berkeley campus um, where we're uh, using this learning scheme to learn occupant behavior in buildings. Safety is that you keep the building within required temperature, humidity, et cetera, levels, um, but, but apply the control in a much more energy efficient way than is done today, which actually isn't very difficult. Okay, thank you very much.